And here at the Adelaide Oval, this is Clem Hill. 49 tests, 3,412 runs, by a score of 191. An average of just under 40. Yes, we're at Adelaide Oval, and this is where cricket and football legends are made in Adelaide. What is the best sport in the world? No, you're wrong, it's cricket. And today, we're going to the Adelaide Oval because we're in Adelaide, and we're gonna check it out. We're gonna do a tour. You and me, we're going, let's do it, go. Crossing the River Torrens now, in the beautiful city of Adelaide, heading to the Adelaide Oval for a tour known, uh, known in cricket circles or across the globe as one of, if not the most beautiful grounds in the world. Um, and so, of course, when I was in Adelaide, I had to go and see it. Well, I haven't yet, but uh, that's what we're doing today. So anyway, uh, I promise you I'm not going to try and explain the rules of cricket to you. Um, but they do also play uh, Aussie rules games here as well. So you see how I, ex I uh, willfully expose you to Australian sports. Um, anyway, I'm really looking forward to this. Um, so let's, let's see exactly what it's like inside the Adelaide Oval. Well, we're all checked in here. I think most of us are ready for the tour. So, um, you just start the next few minutes. Hi, I'm Chris and this is Terry. We'd just like to acknowledge uh, that we're meeting on traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pay respect to their elders and past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge that they continue importance to the Ghana people living today. So we'll split you into two groups. And I think if it's up, we go eight and eight. You two go. Here we go into the famed Adelaide Oval Stadium. Still got a Christmas theme going on. Over here, this is the roof climb Adelaide. You can, um, if you're crazy enough, you can go right on top of the roof here. Not for me, sorry. Would have liked to say I've done it. Don't think I would have had a great time though. <laughs> this is the visiting team's room. It's where my doggies were when they won their preliminary final. Pro dogs, or fourth. Meeting room. All right. yeah. So they've got all the uh, laptops and all the television screens for the football coaches to go through it before the game, half time and after the game. All right. So at your leisure you can jog, walk, run. I want you to run up to the, don't go on to the grass but onto the artificial grass please. Let's go Bont! Dun, 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 dun. Sons of the West. Red, white, no. and blue. Huh? So you just get now a feeling of yeah. of the immense, you know, but the MCG bigger again, right? Oh yeah. Another yeah. double the size. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The thing about us though, if you're up on level five and you're right up the top, and you're at the top of the MCG, we're, we're eight meters meters in closer as a stadium, so we get a better. You. So um, we're heading now to the scoreboard, the famous Adelaide Oval scoreboard. There's been a, there was a lot of resistance to uh, redoing the ground and making it modern because it was such a classical, beautiful oval. I think they've they've done a really good job in maintaining uh, the aesthetics of the place. Um, and over here we've still got a hill, which is very rare in grounds these days, the main grounds. Uh, and this is the original, well, I don't know if it's the original scoreboard, but it's a very old scoreboard. It's a famous scoreboard, it's a beautiful thing. We're gonna go inside it later. Um, 
It's not electronic, it's the way they used to do it. it's on number three at the moment that tells me who's bowling so uh, who, who batted here first Australia so Australia batted against England first here so all the Australian names uh, go under the batsman as they would in order of uh, batting so folks we're going to go inside the scoreboard now but um, just to let you know that uh, the score is 110 years old so I guess that makes it around about whew, 1910, 1911 uh, that it was built and uh, it's only, it's had a few light bulbs and a couple of things added but basically it's the original scoreboard from back in the day. So how about that? Everyone in? Yeah. Okay, just come on here. So, four levels. We have two guys here, two for test matches, two, two. Oh. So we have eight people. They're not volunteers, they work. They've been, it's been handed down from father to son. To put oh. Okay, so oh. these have been here since the 40s. Oh. So look for 33. So, other way. Three, one, two. Three, don't get grease on your shirt. Here we go, three. Okay, so our forefathers might have thought it was too expensive to have more chains and rather so they only put a slot in here. Or maybe they thought no one would make a hundred. So. <laughs> Nine to now, these are, these are your name plates. So obviously this is number nine. So this is the batsman, number nine batsman. So his name goes to the So you can have a little look out there. This is the, this is the lighting system. So this has been here since 1950. So last week it had the England names on it. This looks to me like it's the, the heat. The heat. Yep. Good okay. So what he does, that's the wiki keeper just done something. Oh, looks like it's stuck on. <laughs> so we were playing Victoria here. There's a couple hundred in at the ground. They're coming up to the last session of the day of the game. And Hooksy saying to Graham Yellow, why don't you declare to give us a chance to try and chase the runs down? And Graham Yellow, the captain of Victoria, was procrastinating and didn't want to do it. So he finally did declare for the last session two hours, right? And uh, Hooksy was furious, furious. And it was a time when they used to broadcast Sheffield Shield matches on the ABC radio. Mm -hmm. And the business uh, district is up in the uh, city centre. Mm -hmm. So they used to listen on their trannies and if there was something going on, they'd all come down to the LA Oval. So anyway, this particular day, Hooksy opens up with Rick Darlin, who used to open up for Australia. Okay, so he opens up. The first ball, he, he s s s <laughs> smashed over to the top of that stand that was on that round big building at that time for six. Now you've got to remember the pickets were four. You had to hit the pickets, no ropes, and it went over for six. It wasn't inside. So it was the whole oval he had to clear. Okay, Mind you, when they redeveloped this in 214, that was a square boundary over there. It wasn't a real oval. So when he was on 99, Rick Darling was on seven. And he made a hundred of 34 balls in 43 minutes. So I believe the Adelaide Council leased the land in 1871 and the first games were played here in 1872 and the first time there were grandstands was early 1900s. So anyway, 
anyone that made, makes 100, they get their name on the honor roll for it. If you take five wickets, you get on it. If you get 10 wickets, you get on it down below. Same with the Australian side up there. Okay? look here at the Brabham collection or the Brabham yes the Brabham collection for those who don't know Don Brabham was well is regarded as the greatest cricketer ever to play the game with an average of 99.94 I believe or 96 um, uh, he played back in the 30s and 40s mostly um, yeah what the old cricket bats used to look like folks I'm probably the only one here that thinks the most interesting thing is that gramophone wow look at that piece Thank you for joining me today as I checked out the Adelaide Oval. What an absolutely beautiful spot to watch sport or play sport, of course. Not that I ever have or will, but you know, it's lovely. Thank you again for joining me. This is Adelaide. I'm Andy, Andy's World Journeys. May the journey never end.